captains. The first line is in, the second line follows suit. The big Zabro still at $1.33. Knight the Burn, $4.60. And Golly Gump drops at $14. As the, there goes the green light, the lure's on the move for the commercial hotel Mount Gambia Cup. Heat number four sets racing. Knight the Burn began well. Zinfandel Tory showing two. Nitro Yap up the third posse. Then came here's the big Zabro who moves forward. Then came Golly Gump drops alongside Rotate. Then came and back in the tails, Galactic Horizon. Down the back, Zinfandel Tory leads the way. Zimbic Zabro up the second. Knight the Burn, third posse. Then came Rotate alongside a Galactic Horizon as they swing. Zimbic Zabro now leads by about six on the turn for Knight the Burn, but it's all but in Zimbic Zabro. Zimbic Zabro defeats in Knight the Burn. Then came Galactic Horizon. This is no life for a dog, you know, and then I heard about the dogs that, that die because of a racing injury. Once you know the, the, the real facts, it's hard to, it's hard not to want to do something about it. My wife and I started Great Grey's Rescue in 2017. Before we adopted our first greyhound, I knew nothing about greyhound racing. Through rescue, met other greyhound owners. We discovered more and more about it, and I was horrified. Couldn't believe it, and I thought, what can we do to help? So we started fostering. Before we met our first greyhound, Ellie, when she came over to our place for a meet and greet, I'd never met a greyhound face to face. She was a bit standoffish at first, you know, she walked around the house and investigating everything. And not long before she went to leave, she started playing with Cooper and we just knew she was the one for us. Dally was the inspiration for us to want to foster and ultimately start our own rescue. The passion of other people is what keeps me going. John is such a great guy and he's so passionate about dogs. Easy to stay in contact with everyone. If you have any concerns, they're always there. It's a nice community. This is Mo. She's my latest new greyhound. Yeah, I've been doing some foster caring for Great Greys since last year. You almost take it for granted that a dog will, you know, if you throw a ball, it will go and grab it. And if you say, come here, it will run over to you. And we just forget that those things for other dogs are generations and generations and generations of being pets. Greyhounds, they miss out on all of that stuff. They never get to play. They never get to have fun or be socialised with other dogs or any of those things. So they have to do all of that stuff when they leave the racing industry. Quite often that happens at age two or three or sometimes older. Once they've worked out that they're in a home, they're safe, this is where they're staying, you can literally see them go, oh, I'm allowed to do all this fun stuff, this is great. And they start enjoying themselves and relaxing and being cuddly and playing with balls and toys. We always had dogs growing up and I'd had rescue dogs prior to Suki. She was my first greyhound. Met her through her foster carer and yeah, she definitely changed my life. Such a beautiful, gentle dog. She'd never been a pet before. She'd been a racer for five years, fitted straight into our home. She had a terrible cancer surgery a few years after I got her, which took almost 10 months of recovery and a couple of major surgeries. This time last year, she passed away quite suddenly as the cancer had, had recurred. Almost six years of awesome times together. And yeah, she definitely made my love for greyhounds grow. She's pretty special. She changed a lot of things for me. Yeah. We're part of something that's doing good for dogs. Got an emergency at the moment, picking up the two girls. I had no foster carers, but they had to be picked up today and people answered the call. I think we're up around over 400 people now and it's a, a great little community. What's really kept me passionate about it is seeing other people's passion. The volunteers that we have, the foster carers, the transport volunteers, the admin volunteers, all of them 
No, we couldn't do it all on our own. When we get greyhounds from trainers, we don't know what they're going to be like. A lot of greyhounds that come to us are very shut down and anxious. They've been living a long time in the kennels with not much human interaction. It takes some time to, to learn to trust people. We run on a foster care model. We don't have a premises, so the dogs are fostered in homes exactly the same way as if they were already pets in those homes. Greyhounds, you know, they've come to us, they don't know stairs. They've never had a soft bed, you know, a really soft bed in their life. They've never slept around people, you know, and so they get to sleep on a dog bed, sometimes in the same room as the, as the people do. There's just so many little things. I've seen what happens at the other end. I've seen the, the dogs that, that come out worse for web. And I've seen just how affectionate and loving greyhounds can be. There's a lot of greyhounds to be rescued. People think that it's not an issue anymore because they all find homes. Um, and I think it's really important that people know that that's really not the case. There's definitely a lot of dogs that still end up dead. And I don't know, I don't know how, you know, they make that okay.